four. There you go. One, two, three, four. Nice. Now don't turn your head. Keep your eye focused straight ahead. Look at my shoulders and my hips. Ready? Hip. One, two, three, four. Piece of cake. Good job. Oos. Hi, welcome to our show, Karate and You. I'm your host, Master Art Bynes. Before we begin today's program, I'd like to explain a little bit about our show. As you know, Karate and You wasn't designed specifically just to promote United States Black Cat Kempo Karate, but to promote all styles of the martial arts, so we all unite in a common cause to help improve our country and help make it a happier, healthier, safer place in which to live. Today's show, we're going to be doing a couple of hand drills, not so much for power, but for hand-eye coordination. One of the things that the martial arts develops is good hand-eye coordination. Uh, boxing is good for hand-eye coordination. And one of the best exercises or athletic activities you can get involved with, believe it or not, for hand-eye coordination is juggling. And we might be doing that on next week's show. So without any further ado, turn into VCR. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to another Karate and You. Uh, before we begin today's program, as uh, is the norm, I have to take this liberty, which is my, from my pleasure to introduce my special guest and assistant on today's show, Sensei Eduardo Alvarado. And uh, Sensei is uh, one of our black belts in our school, one of our instructors, 16 years old, been with me for 12 years, started karate around the four or five-ish, and now he's got hair on his face. <laughs> I don't understand how that happened. But time flies. Good looking guy, too, I'll tell you what, you know? Any more contracts on the movie career, anything? No, happen? nothing yet. Oh, okay, well, keep me posted on that, will you? Yes, sir. All right. In any uh, event, what we, uh, event, respect. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to be working on some things that will improve our hand-eye coordination today. And uh, we brought along a couple of teaching aids, these little pads here. And if you take a, a close-up, you can see there's a little red dot there. And those of you who remember, follow the bouncing ball, you know, Oklahoma, <laughs> when the wind comes sail. Not a good song. I don't think people understand that song. All right, in any respect, we are going to be working with our use of our teaching aids today, and we're going to be working some drills that will improve our hand-eye coordination. And hand-eye coordination is very important for just about all facets of life, not just for self-defense. But basically, every sport that is played requires some degree of hand-eye coordination, uh, even playing cards, for that matter. So I'm going to be using these just as an aid. If you can just strap me in there. I'm going to do the Harry Adini. Watch me escape now from these. What we're going to do, we're going to work on some hand techniques. I'd like you to get into a fighting stance, if you would. Aya! And what I want you to do is I want you to just kind of take that right hand, and you're going to hit this little pad here, Eduardo. And the big thing here, and you people at home, if you don't have the use of the teaching aids, just use your hands. The concept here is not to hit the target hard. Just to make contact with the target, touch it, incorporate some body mechanics, but more importantly, try and follow the pad, find the target. Now, the person who's going to be holding the target is the coach. He tells the person punching what he wants them to do, and then that person's job is to try and follow it. So it can get a little complex at times, but this will really guarantee to improve your hand-eye coordination. Now, let's just stick the left hand out there and just touch that little ball, if you would. Hip. Good, back again, move it a little closer, too. Good. Now, I don't want you actually stepping, just turn a little bit. The whole idea here, open this up, is that when you hit somebody, you hit them with your body, you make contact with a particular limb, whether it be your hands, your feet, or your head. Now, what I want to do is this. My hand starts, my body follows, so I push my hand like a lance. So from here, what I want to do is when I push, I want to turn my hip and my shoulder, and get maximum extension. At the same time, I want to get my body weight into it because I'm not stepping forward. So I have to figure out a way to get my momentum of my body to go forward without stepping. If I just stick my hand out here and I give Eduardo a push, he can stay there pretty good. He's got a lot of stability. Nothing going to happen. But watch what happens when I turn my hip and my shoulder. Whoop, come back here. Get back over here. You almost went into the moat over there. Watch out for the alligators, will you? There's a couple mermaids swimming around, though. If you see them, let me know. Okay, back over here. Now, I just want you to turn your hip a little bit, just on impact. Hip. There you go, back again. Hip. Nice. And hit the ball. Hip. There you go, index finger, middle finger, knuckle. Hip. Good. Hip. Now, tuck your chin. Don't give me that chin, pal, because I see chins. <laughs> I go for them. Hip. Good. Back again. Hip. Nice. Now. We also want to incorporate a little what we call breathing. Each time you touch this, I want you to do a little go. Good, like Okay, here we go. Ready? Hip. Good. Hip. Good. Try turning more with your shoulder, rotating your shoulder. Hip. 
that's better. Hip. There you go. Now, there's no more effort applied here as far as muscle strength is concerned. He's in relying right now on his body weight. And he's increased his power by learning how to use his mechanics of his body. Okay, now, again, hip. Good. Now what I want you to do is I want you to throw that right hand right up into that target, if you would. Hip. Good. Hip. Nice. Hip. Good. Now as that right hand goes out, make sure that left hand stays underneath your chin. Hip. Good. Hip. That's it. Hip. Very good. Now, notice that he's rotating his hip and his shoulder. He's getting up on the ball of his foot, and he's pivoting. He wants to get his right shoulder closer to the target than the left shoulder upon impact. This gives him maximum extension. Right now, without rotating, just stick your hand out. That's as long as his hand goes. Now, here's magic. I learned this from a magician. Okay, keep your hand out there. Magic. Sprinkle a little dust on him. He pivots on the ball of his foot. Watch his hand grow. Ooh, how did I do that? Okay, back again. Just by that little pivot of the ball of the foot, rotating his hip and his shoulder, his extension gets longer. If you're going to just punch and you're going to not rotate your hips and shoulders, you're limited as far as the extension of your arm. By rotating, he can hit. Go. That's the deal. Back again. Nice. Pivoting on the balls of his feet. One more time. Beautiful. One more time, sir. All right, this time I want you to freeze right there. Hip. All right, now notice he's up on the ball of his foot. His hip and shoulder are twisted. He wants to get his whole body weight into the technique. If you're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody, which I don't really recommend, however, there are occasions where that might happen. You have to learn to incorporate your body weight without being able to step forward because you're limited. You're restricted for movement. So you have to learn how to rotate your hips and shoulders from a stationary position to get maximum power in here. The object, again, is to hit the man with your being, your mind, your body, and your heart. Make contact with the fist. The fist is the only thing that's doing is touching. You're hitting with your whole entire being. Back again. All right, good. Now, we've established a left and a right. It's getting tougher. From here, I just want you to do a one-two punch, if you would, and try and hit that little red ball, that little red dot that we got there. You're getting very sleepy. Watch the red dot. I want you to get up on the coffee table and pretend you are a chicken. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two. I got a chicken out there. A camera person's a chicken. You hear them? They're clucking. Okay, here we go. One, two. Hip. Nice. Hip. Good. Hip. Hip. Now, all it is is just rotation. He's not putting any effort whatsoever. He's not flexing his muscles. He's not trying to kill this thing. And he's getting into the target. Also, the important thing is that he's only hitting with the index finger knuckle, middle finger knuckle. Let me turn this thing around here. Lay it right up there. Make a fist. All right. Index finger knuckle, right there. Middle finger knuckle, right there. The percentage of power on these is 70%, point your finger to index, 30% middle. All right, good. Put them together, and we got a fist. 70-30, that's the percentage of power. And the reason we do that is the less striking surface that you make contact with, the more penetration. If he hits me with his whole fist in here, he's going to move my hand back, but he's not going to penetrate into the target. If he only hits with these two knuckles, he'll move my hand back a little, but he's also going to go in maybe about a half inch to an inch into the target, which is going to cause severe pain. All right, here we go now. One, two, hip. Nice, hip. Good. Rotation, hip. Good. Tuck your chin up. I told you, I see that chin up again. I'll be plucking those two, two hairs on your chin you got there. Hip. Nice, hip. Good, hip. More hip on the lead. More hip on the lead. You're coming over your toe too much. That's a bad place to be. If your weight's over your toe like this and somebody connects you on your mastoid or your chin somewhere, you go down and you go into that cockroach position and it's good night, Irene. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, so don't put too much weight forward. Keep the weight here. Distribute it evenly like on your navel area or the OB of your belt. Twist this way. That's where you want to stay. Don't get over here because you hit me here. I'm telling you, I'm going down. Hip. There it is. Hip. That's it. Don't, you're not trying to kill the pad. Again, like I said, you're just making contact. Hip. Good. Now, notice the weight distribution of Eduardo's body. When he throws his left hand, his weight's on his left leg, and he turns his hip. Go ahead. So there is power coming up from the floor. From here, he takes his right hand, he drives off on the ball of his right foot, turns his hip and shoulder in, hits. Go. Bang. He's hitting from the floor. Power from the floor. It's important that you understand that. Now, right now, you, see, you can see his back leg there. He's up on the ball of his foot. Let's say, for hypothetically, let's say you ran out of gas in your car in the middle of the road. The road's kind of desolated, so it's not too dangerous for you to get out. 
you get out, you want to try and push your car off to the side of the road. You can't push your car like this. You got to get up on the balls of your feet and you got to drive. You got to drive to push that tremendous amount of weight off that road. Same principle here when you're throwing that punch. You don't punch flat footed. You got no power. I mean, if I hit bone against bone, I might hurt him. I might cut him a little bit. I might knock the wind out of him. But I mean, if he squared off on me and I start punching this way and my feet are flat, I guarantee you I'm going to be wasting a lot of time. And the end result is I'm going to wind up with a big fat nose and a fat lip. So what you have to do is learn how to get up on the balls of your feet and drive. Drive. Turn your hips and shoulders so you get maximum power. That's why it doesn't matter about the size of the fighter. It's the size of the fight in the fighter. And along with the size of the fight in the fighter is the knowledge that the fighter has to have. All right. Now we're going to work a little harder here. Pretty simple. I know you can count to one, two. Now we're going to try one, two, and then slipping over. And what I want to do is this. You just hold your right hand up. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I stick my left out, my right out. From here, you take that left like you're going to hit me in the head. Go ahead. And I come over and back up. And when I come back up, my weight's now on my right leg. From here, I'm all set up. My leg's coiled, ready to go. Bang. Right hand. Pretty simple? Yes, sir. Let's do it again for the people at home so they can see what's going on. Hands up. I'm out here. It's one. He throws the left. I slip. I come back up. I throw my right. Now notice that my other hand is back here. You know, while the parents are out having a good time, there's got to be a babysitter watching the home here, watching the house. So that's here just in case he throws something at me, I can block. All right. Same thing applies here, Edward. I'd like to see you do this now. I want you to do a one-two. Now, one thing you don't want to do is anticipate this hand coming over. You're going to see from time to time, Edward will be shucking and jiving there because I'm going to fake him out. But don't anticipate it. When that thing starts coming to you, and you have to picture yourself in a glass tube. Those of you, if you ever go to your grandma's house, you've probably got one of those clocks, those eight-day clocks, and they're surrounded by a glass, like a big glass tube or a test tube. You have to pretend that you're in this tube, and you don't move until something touches the glass. That's when you move. Because if you move too soon, the direction of my hand could change, and I could follow you. You move too late, and the result is you get hit. So it's about, it's, it's, you got to pretend you're in a tube, maybe about maybe 18 inches to two feet around you, in front of you. All right, here we go now. One, two, slips, and throws the right. Woo! That was very good. We're going to give you karate bucks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Hip. One, two. Slips. Three. Very nice. Hip. Good. Now, stay loose. Also, you don't want to be detracted from your attention of your eye. In other words, from here, if Ed Warner throws his punch, go ahead, throws his punch, and then he looks over to see my hand, look at this. He's open here. I can nail him. So you want to use your eye, peripheral vision of your eye. You want to use your vision, and you want to just focus in on the shoulders and the hips. That's all you want to do. Don't necessarily just focus in on this pad. Ready? Hip. There it is. Hip. Good. Now I'm going to drop my hand a little lower so he has to do a little more slipping. Let's move over this way a little bit so you don't slip into my shogi screen that I got from the Emperor of Japan. <laughs> that was when I got my tip of my finger cut off for my seventh degree black belt. People are all aware of that, I'm sure. It was in all the newspapers. Got the tip cut off. They put it in a little gold box, sent it over there. It's in the archives. All right, here we go. Ready? Hip. Nice. More hip on that right, that nice. last right. Hip. Good. Hip. This is almost like juggling. Hip. Good. Watch this. Hip. Hey, that was good. Hip. All right, now you're giving me the doggy paddle. Don't give me doggy paddle. Give me the right movement there. Mechanics. Whoosh. Whoosh. And smile. Will you, Eduardo? I'm having fun, aren't you? Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. Hip. Ah, nice. Hip. Good. Hip. Good. Hip. Very good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to throw what they call a hook in. And when you throw this hook, you don't let your arm go way out and reach. You kind of turn your body. Turn your body, just like so. So what's going to happen is this. Hold your hand up. I give a one. I give a two. His left comes up. I slip. I pop him. Weight's on my left leg now. Bang! And I blast him with my left hand. And when I do, the weight's here. All I do is let my arm go around, across. And I'm going to be hooking to the body. I can hook to the body or I can hook to the head. In this case, we're going to be hooking to the body. And my pad's going to be right there for him. 
All right? This is a lot of fun. When you work with a partner, you can have a lot of fun. And what you do is you just kind of make up some combinations and see if they can follow them out. Almost like Simon Says. Move over a little bit. Except this is called Sensei Says. Okay. Ready? Yep. Good. You turned your eyes off of me. It's there. Can you see it? Yes, sir. All right. You have to use that, that extra sensory perception there, pal. That sixth sense. I know it's there. Push. Push. Just like you know I'm standing here. You know that I, in order to be where I am, I've got to be standing on my feet. You know where they're at. They're right underneath me. All right. Here we go. Hip. Ooh, that's beautiful. That brings tears to my eyes. Hip. Nice. Hip. Ah, I didn't pull the hand out. You anticipated. You don't anticipate, because after it's over, it's over. Yes, sir. That's called premature. Push. Push. Premature things somehow just don't work out right. So you have to be ready for the right time and the right moment. Be patient. Push. Push. All right, here we go. Hip. Nice. Hip. Good. Hip. Very good. Let's switch our position over here so people can see a different angle from you. Good. Hip. Nice. Hip. Good. You took your eyes over there. Yes. Next time you take your eyes over, I'm coming back with my right, and you'll be chiclets will be all over the place here. Those big pearly whites won't look so good, pal. Here we go. Hip. Good. Hip. Nice. Hip. Don't give up. Hip. Good. Hip. You punched him, he wasn't there. Don't anticipate. Push. Push. You have to have complete control, like anything you do in life, whether it's physical or mental or verbal. You have to control the situation. Push. Push. Control it. Hip. Good. Hip. Nice. Hip. Hey, got you, man. I got you. Boy, get over there. Okay, good. Nice. Now you can see that this gets a little complicated, and you can play with this a little bit. You can play with it a little bit and have a lot of fun. Now, let's get back into our defensive position. Oh, yeah. These things are terrible. I have to scratch my nose, and, and it's... Okay, everything all right? I got no stalactites hanging there, do I? Okay, here we go. Now, same thing, different angle. One, two, freeze. Hip. Good. Now what I want you to do is this. I want you to take your left hand and give me a three. Go ahead. Bang, bring it back, and then hook. Good, all right? So it's one, two, three, four with the same hand. Ready? Hip. Good. Hip. There you go. It's almost like playing the drums, huh? Yes, Move in a little closer. Hip. Nice. Hip. Good. Hip. Good. Now, this is where the Kempo stylists get their hand techniques. Yes, sir. I mean, they don't stand there and do all this strange off-the-wall stuff. To be perfectly honest with you, and I can assure you, uh, I've talked to many, many grandmasters throughout my day, and they'll all agree. You know, when Orient was first pretty much introduced into our country here, a lot of the service people that traveled over to the East, the Far East, were very impressed with the Easterners' ability to throw kicks. However, what a lot of us don't know is that the Easterners were very impressed with the way that the Westerners were able to throw their hand techniques. A hook, a jab, a cross. They couldn't deal with those things. However, a lot of the people from the West who went over there were so fascinated they brought it back. The kicking. And now it's starting to evolve where you see a lot of systems, in, particularly in Kumite, sparring, free fighting. They have a lot of hand techniques that resemble boxing skills. Because if you take a good boxing skilled person with a good kicking skilled person, martial artist, you have a, a real good arsenal of technique there, and you have a person who's pretty much unstoppable. Provided they don't get into a grappling situation, then you have to rely on some grappling techniques, some collegiate wrestling, or some jujitsu. But that's just what it's all about. So it's important that you develop some of these skills. Because a lot of the things that you do when you're practicing your martial arts, your basic fundamental moves, your stances, they're good. They develop a lot of uh, inner strength, form, stability, and there's a lot of discipline involved. 
However, when you get into a real confrontation, a real fight, you see all of a sudden these things aren't really there. However, those things are the stones, the foundations, the bricks that must be laid in order to be a good martial artist. And I don't mean just one who has good fighting skills, but one who has good skill up here in the mind. All right, now, let's get back. And what I want you to do is the same thing. One, two, three, four. Same hand. Hip. Good. Hip. Good. Hip. Good. Hip. Nice. Now, finish him off with the right. One, two, cha-cha-cha. <laughs> See, si, senor? See. Si. Okay, here we go. Ready. Hip. Ooh, a pitiful. Hip. Nice. Keep your chin tucked. I'm telling that chin just keeps coming up. And it's, to me, it's like, you know, the apple up in the tree. All I got to do is grab it. Hip. Nice. Don't try and kill the bag. Just make contact with the bag. Oof, very nice. Hip. Good. Now, these hand techniques are very, very important. Very, very important. Hip. Good. Hand-eye coordination, like I said, is good for all facets of sports activity. Hip. Nice. Hip. Very good. Okay. Take these things off, will you? My hands are losing a lot of weight here. I got a piano lesson a half hour. All right. Now, when you're practicing your martial arts, it's imperative that when you're working with a partner, like you just saw Eduardo and I, you take it very, very seriously. You have a mutual respect for one another. At no time do we ever want to you know, cause any malicious contact or pain on one another. And you work with each other. At one point, you have to disassociate yourself with what's going on around you and focus in on this because you are throwing hands and feet at each other. And it could possibly, there could be a possibility that there could be an injury sustained, particularly if you start daydreaming. You start thinking about, you know, you're going out on a date afterwards or you got homework to do, or I got to mow the lawn, or my wife wants me to paint the fence, or I got to go grocery shopping, or whatever the case may be. When you bow in, oos, that's gone. That's eliminated. I'm only thinking about the martial arts. And what's also important is not how many hours you put in, it's what you put in the hour. So if you're training for two hours and you're not training with quality time, you're shoving against the tide. What's important is that the time that you spend is on the topic of the curriculum, of the material that is necessary for you to excel, and excel in your skills, physical skills, and your mental skills as well. That's about all the time we have. We've got to go to our match of the week. I'm having fun. So am I. We'll be right back. This week's match of the week, to the right of your screen, we've got Daniel Zarenka. To the left is Mr. Robert Branza. Daniel's 11 years old, blue belt at our school, and Robert happens to be 12 years old, also a blue belt at our school. Our referee, Sensei Jim Megdeer. A lot of leg action here. Nice drop down spin sweep attempt. The only way you can get techniques to work is to apply them and try them. Too far out of that butterfly. Nice one two right roundhouse with a back fist by Daniel. One two out of side kick. Nice combination with the hands and the legs. That's a right there, right in there, giving some instructions. Hands up, what did you say? That's right. Encouraging Robert to keep his hands up. Almost. Foot sweep attempt by Robert. 30 seconds. 30 seconds left. Good round kick by Daniel. Good counter kick by Robert. Followed up with some hands. Nice back fist by Daniel. Come on, let's go. Fire it in there, guys. Fire. That's Five seconds left. Come on, let's go. That's this week's match of the week. Nice match. Face me. Face me. Face me. Face me. 
tell you, those two guys are getting good. They're going to be good black belts. Not only are they good technicians, but they're very well disciplined. Both are really good students in school. We'll be right back after this message. Thanks to the, uh, the organization of UNICO. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was honored with the Man of the Year Award by the UNICO Foundation and also the Italian American Club of Jackson. I want to thank you very much. That was really a, a real honor for me. I'd also like to say thank you to uh, Spano's Restaurant. Excellent food. Excellent! I'm coming back next week. Um, if you'd like to be a guest, you know where to get a hold of me. Eduardo, anybody want to say hello to? Yes, I'd like to say hello to my mom, my dad, all the students at karate, and to all the instructors as well. Okay, anything else you'd like to add? Yes, I'd like to ask you, you know, learning, you know, a little bit of the Kempo style, do they incorporate kicks as well? Yes, they do. And also for the Taekwondo, do they incorporate hand techniques? Well, the thing about the difference between the Kempo and the Taekwondo hand style is that Kempo styles are noted for their elusive hand techniques. Yes, sir. Taekwondo devastating kicking ability. Our style encompasses both styles. Okay, we also incorporate some collegiate wrestling. They're telling me I gotta get out of here, Eduardo. I wish we could go on. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Until we meet again, remember that the biggest obstacle in life is yourself. Overcome it, you will achieve the greatest accomplishment of all. This can only be achieved however, through a balanced education that pertains to knowledge in the mind, honesty in the heart, and strength in the body. Thank you, have a happy, healthy, and safe week. Okay, let's get those hands up there. Aya. It's real easy, just tie some hand right there. Hip, good, hip, Aya. hip, Aya. hip, Aya. hip, Aya. coming over, hip, Aya. good, hip, Aya. good, hip. Aya. Good. hip. Aya. Good. hip.